Hey guys, it's your boy Gummy Rice here today to do another round of Fortnite videos. You know me, I never play video games on this channel, but I did last week and look at those numbers. Clearly, Fortnite is all you guys want. That half-naked chick on the thumbnail probably affected nothing at all. But first, we gotta find ourselves a girl willing to get almost naked on camera, but not fully naked since you know gotta keep those YouTube dollars flowing in. Flexing on the fans. Hey, yo, generic friend, your girlfriend is right there. Even though she's a human being who can think and act on her own, can I treat her like an object by asking you, her obviously male keeper, whether I can borrow her so she can get almost naked in one of my videos? Yo! Yes and yes. <laughs> All right, boys, we got Fortnite fired up. I got Boobs McGee over here. So, Boobs, for each kill, I'm gonna need you to remove one article of clothing. You okay with that? Doesn't matter. Already cleared it with your boyfriend. Let's do this. Oh, so close. Oh, come on, just one more game. Beginner's luck, it's where? Oh, so close. Come on, that's clearly a hacker. Can I have another game? Can I have another game? I, I swear I'm gonna do it this time. Oh, what, what a noob tactic. All right, boys, so that was Strip Fortnite. Make sure you drop a like for more. And as always, follow me on the Instas. Gummy Rice out! Internet, welcome to Game Theory, the show that's honestly just depressed that this guy is hitting 10 million subscribers before us. Like, how long like did the rape last for? Five minutes or less. Oh, okay, so it's not that bad. No, but did it feel good though? Anyway, one way he and a bunch of other YouTubers and streamers are surging up the charts these days is by playing Fortnite, a game that spread like wildfire across the internet. If you haven't heard of it, you must be living under a rock. And honestly, you're probably under that rock, hoping for some alone time to play more Fortnite. Just when everyone thought PUBG was untouchable, Fortnite surged to overtake its player count and just doubled PUBG's viewership on Twitch. The game is addictive. Wait, maybe I should watch what I say. Good Morning America might take that quote out of context for more scare tactics against video games. This has a new game called Fortnite, and some parents are worrying their kids are spending way too much time at the controls. Hey, stop! I, why? Real quick, while I'm on the topic of that Good Morning America story, I'm currently working on a meta theory about gamers, battle royale games, and how personalities are linked to the games that we choose to play. But I need your guys' help. After this episode, there's actually a link to a secure online survey that I created that I would love to have you fill out. Link is in the top line of the description for you guys to fill out. It should only take you about 10 minutes total. So please, I would love to have you be a part of an upcoming game theory episode, and honestly helping me to defend Fortnite and gaming as a whole against those people who are trying to tear us down. Or give us a bad name. That is what some of these upcoming theories are all about. Anyway, that's all for a future video. Today, I want to talk about something that Fortnite is lacking. Story. Oh sure, there's the save the world mode, but let's face it, it requires players to work together and it costs $40 to play. No duh, it's a mode that no one cares about. And even if you did care about it, which, you know, I have to as a part of this show, the story just amounts to, oh look, here's a purple storm that appeared one day and it summoned zombies. Don't die. That is literally the extent of what Epic Games came up with in the six years that Fortnite has been in development. Or at least that's all they've revealed to players so far. But I think there's a bit more story lurking under the surface here. I think that the developers have already started hiding clues as to where they'd like to go with the story of this game by the time of its full release. Or at least they had those intentions, but will probably struggle to pull themselves away from the gobs of money they're making on Battle Royale mode to fully flesh those sorts of things out. So for me, and the literal one person on the Fortnite forums who simply posted lore? Question mark? I wanted to step in and fill in some of the gaps. What is the story of Fortnite beyond purple cloud equals zombies? The only thing we need now is even the slightest understanding of what's going on. Today, I'm gonna give you exactly that. Our first clue as to the real lore of this game comes from the opening cutscene in Save the World mode. After your character runs to the Vindertech home base, you meet Ray, the robotic assistant who's your guide throughout the rest of the PvE mode. But what's interesting here isn't what's said, but rather what's shown. 
If you look closely at Ray's clipboard as she talks about plans to overcome the storm, you'll notice some drawings, specifically a drawing of a rocket and two planets orbiting what appears to be the sun. And if you're wondering what's the deal with that circle and the two dotted circles on either side of it, if I were to guess, that's the developers trying to show the movement of that orbiting planet, and to show that the characters were trying to launch the rocket to land on that planet as it's moving through its orbit. And we know that this is the sun in the middle for two reasons. First, just notice that classic sun starburst around that center circle, meaning that this is definitely a star. But secondly, notice this small arrow between the inner and outer rings pointing counterclockwise. This is an important detail because all eight planets in the solar system orbit the sun in the direction that the sun is rotating. The sun rotates in a counterclockwise direction, exactly like the diagram is showing here. Now, what's interesting about this when it comes to Fortnite's story is that there are only two planets shown on this diagram, presumably representing Mercury and Venus, the two closest planets to the sun. And it looks like the rocket is traveling from the first ring looking to land on the planet in the second ring. That little bit right there off the second ring looks more like a label than a flight trajectory. Also, if the rocket was launching from Earth, why wouldn't there be a third ring in this diagram? In other words, what I'm saying here is that these diagrams hint at the possibility that Fortnite might not be taking place on Earth, like many have assumed, but rather on another planet. Or, more specifically, the second planet from the sun, Venus. Now, that at first might seem ridiculous, but the more you look at it, the more the facts just line up. First, the game never explicitly says what planet we're on. I dug through everything, and I do mean everything in the game and its promotional materials, and all of it, all of it uses the word world not Earth. Save the world mode. You are the world's best heroes. Even this quote that appeared early in the game's promotional cycle, reclaiming this mysterious world won't be easy. Well, Earth isn't a mysterious world. You would just say reclaiming Earth, if that's what the goal of the game was. So, in addition to Ray's cutscene diagram, it seems like Epic Games have definitely been leaving open the possibility of the events of Fortnite taking place on a different planet. Even the shots we see of this world from outer space look nothing like Earth. Earth. At the end of the first mission in Save the World mode, you launch a satellite into space, which spits back this shot of the Fortnite planet. Now, I don't know about you, but this doesn't look like any landmass I've ever seen on a globe or map, but it does look like this landmass on Venus, especially if you're using maps of terraformed Venus, basically how Venus would look if it had the same amount of water as Earth. Even size-wise, that continent we see on Fortnite's planet and this landmass I just pointed out on the surface of Venus roughly match up in how how much of the planet's surface they actually take up. Trust me, I did the math. Speaking of math and sizes of land masses in this game, this is kind of a side note, but I had nowhere else to put this in the script and I thought you guys would get a kick out of it. Currently, there is no defined size of the island in Fortnite. Many fans think that each large box on the in-game map is equal to one square kilometer because that's how PUBG measures. However, that simply isn't the case. I did a bunch of measurements back when the map was divided into a 7x7 seven seven grid and it took 1 minute and 15 seconds to run across each grid square on the map at top speed. If it were truly one kilometer each, then the players would be running at 13 meters per second, or 29 miles per hour. That's faster than Usain Bolt sprinting at top speed. So for fun, I went and calculated out the actual size of the island. Now, east of Greasy Grove, there's a crashed battle bus. That battle bus closely resembles a Vision school bus design created by the manufacturer Bluebird. Now, assuming that they have similar specifications, the bus should measure at about 40 feet or 12 meters long. Using pixel measurements with the battle bus as our ruler, we're able to determine that each grid on the map would be a much more manageable 330 meters long, 1,082 feet. With a size like that, it means that each player is running at a max speed of 4.4 meters per second, or 10 miles per second per hour. Since the map at the time was seven boxes wide, and since the island itself hasn't changed size, only the grids on the map have gotten smaller, we can determine that the entire map is defined to be 2,310 meters by 2,310 meters, or just under a 7,580 foot square. So even if you loyal Fortniters don't buy anything about today's theory, you can at least walk away with some new knowledge about the scale of the game that you're playing. Anyway, back to Venus. Watching players jumping in the game, it's immediately clear that the gravity in Fortnite is actually less than it is on Earth. Because Venus is slightly smaller than Earth, it too has a lower gravity, making it a closer match to the jumping behavior that we see in the game. But perhaps the biggest connection to Venus as the setting of Fortnite is the main feature of the game, the storm. A purple thunderstorm that can kill humans in seconds. First, let's talk about the storm's rain. Now, clearly this isn't your average rainstorm. It's enough to rapid 
deadly eat away at your health, killing heroes and battle royale hopes and dreams in mere seconds. This means that this isn't your normal raid, it has to be something much more deadly, something that can kill you on contact. But what can possibly rain down from the sky and eat away at your body? Well, Venus once again has the answer, acid rain. For those of you who dozed off during 8th grade science class, the pH scale measures the ratio between hydrogen ions and hydroxide molecules in a liquid. The scale ranges from 0, acids that have a high presence of hydrogen ions, to 14, bases, which possess a high presence of hydroxide molecules. A pH of 7 is neutral. Now, on Earth, we absolutely have acid rain, but barely does it get below a pH of 4. That's basically the acidity of tomato juice or a soda. It's just too diluted to cause any major damage. You can stand out in it and you're gonna be just fine. But on Venus, acid rain is taken to a whole new level, where literally it rains battery acid from the sky. Or more specifically, sulfuric acid. Stuff with a pH of 1. As soon as sulfuric acid would touch your hero's skin, it would start to corrode, burning and blistering the skin. Getting drenched in the stuff like you see in Fortnite would absolutely cause death in seconds. And believe it or not, but the in-game evidence absolutely lines up. Not only is it deadly to players, but no Notice those electric sparks around the characters as they run to escape from the storm? Well, that would even more clearly point towards acid rain, as the high number of charged ions floating around in the sulfuric acid actually make for an excellent electrical conductor. It's very good for our evidence, it's very bad for the survivors, slowly getting eaten alive by husks and death rain. And if you want even more evidence for acid rain in the game, notice the peeling paint of buildings, the rusting on metal structures, and even the lack of fish in Loot Lake. All three of these are classic signs of acid raining down from the sky. Even the trees in the game support this conclusion. Acid rain absolutely kills trees, but not in the way that you might think. Contrary to popular belief, acid rain doesn't make trees rot, but instead kills them through a process known as phototoxicity. It basically makes the plants more sensitive to light. The main symptoms of this sort of light sensitivity are saturated hues on the trees and a uniform color found throughout the leaves rather than a more natural gradient. The trees in Fortnite exhibit both saturated hues and uniform color in the leaves, a sign of either acid rain-induced phototoxicity or a game with a simple cartoony aesthetic. I'll let you be the judge. Oh, do you, Prince? You want to see me bathing in the purple rain, huh? So I can be corroded to death and you can take the battle royale victory for yourself? I don't think so. Even the weather patterns that we see on the planet and the overall spread of the storm across the planet's surface put it on Venus. Now, this is going really deep, but hopefully you guys appreciate this. You notice how in this opening shot we see the reflection of the sun here on the surface of the planet? Well, that helps us establish that the planet is rotating horizontally. Now, look at how the storm spreads across the planet, also horizontally straight across the surface. This is actually abnormal, based on atmospheric circulation patterns. On Earth, the atmosphere actually circulates upwards, towards the colder poles. It's actually a pretty complicated system, in part because the Earth rotates so quickly. But on Venus, where the planet rotates so slowly, the weather rushes horizontally across the planet constantly, as cold air from the dark side of the planet rushes in to replace the warm air from the sunlit half. And that is exactly what we see in Fortnite. A horizontal horizontal sweep across the planet, just like Venus's weather, spreading in a way that is very different from how a similar storm on Earth would behave. Now, I know what you're gonna say, it's just a game and they didn't think about any of this. They made some purple clouds and added zombies. And yeah, you know what, you're absolutely right. Well, except for that diagram at the beginning and the repeated use of the word world. I think those indicate that they had other plans for the series that don't involve Earth. Anyway, what I'm offering with this episode is an explanation, an out for Epic Games, if you will, giving them an answer that they didn't get around to in the six years of developing Fortnite. Putting the events of Fortnite on Venus fits not only the slim bits of lore that currently exist in the game, but also works from a scientific angle. Well, everything but the purple clouds. Try as I might, I couldn't get that to make sense anywhere. On a separate but related research note, the gas argon is used in neon signs because it glows purple when a current is run through it, but no planet actually has enough argon in its atmosphere to recreate what we see in Fortnite. And even though scientists were surprised at the amount of argon that actually exists in Venus's atmosphere, it actually wasn't enough to make a viable case and try to shoehorn it into the episode. Trust me, I tried, but I honestly didn't want to stretch the facts that thin. And while on the topic of stretching the facts, for those of you who are 
are truly hardcore enough to question this episode by saying Venus doesn't have water, thus invalidating everything we've just covered in this episode, well, you're only partially right. Venus doesn't have water now. Despite being our sister planet in both size and distance to the sun, it is a nightmarish hellscape. You ever wonder why we're sending probes to Pluto and not spending more time exploring Venus? It's because scientists are no joke afraid of Venus. It literally destroys any probes that we send onto the planet within an hour of them landing. And for good reason. At 484 degrees Celsius or 903 degrees Fahrenheit, the surface of Venus is hot enough to melt lead. It is hotter than even Mercury, which is half the distance to the sun, literally in the sun's armpit. The atmospheric pressure on Venus equals about 90 Earth atmospheres. That means standing on the surface of Venus would feel like you'd gone one kilometer underwater, or over half a mile underwater here on Earth. You know how awful it is to be a few feet underwater? This is half a mile underwater. That is how intense the pressure would be on your body. It'd be like taking a car, compressing it down to a square inch, and then covering every bit of your body in those super dense car cubes. And it's all because of Venus's global warming. 97% of Venus's atmosphere is made of carbon dioxide, which means the surface of the planet gets super heated and never cools off. But here's where it all works in the context of Fortnite. It wasn't always that way. In 2006, scientists came to the conclusion that Venus had a period when it was filled with water. Quote, everything points to there being large amounts of water here in the past. That's a quote from Colin Wilson, a professor of oceanic, atmospheric, and planetary physics at Oxford University and a member of the team that made this discovery. Venus used to be just like Earth. And that is the story that Epic Games can tell through Fortnite. One of a young, terraformed Venus, an Earth 1.0 being destroyed by a rampant storm. A planet that humans need to rocket off of and escape from, either to Earth or to Mercury. It's a story that works from Easter eggs already in the game. From the diagram, to the wording of the promotional materials, to the design of the planet viewed from outer space. It's also a story that works with real-life science, from the history of Venus, to its acid rain, to the weather patterns present on the planet. Overall, setting the events of Fortnite on the planet Venus is a story that would work, and a story that'd be pretty darn unique. And at the very least, it'd be a whole lot better than the big heaping help of nothing that we're all currently working with. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for clicking the link in the description and helping to fill out that survey I talked to you about earlier in this episode. Again, this is you helping me with an upcoming episode of Game Theory. You know that you'll be a part of that episode, and honestly, it's an episode I'm angling to be one that defends us gamers against the onslaught of traditional media hate. So a win across the board. All it takes is for you to take 10 minutes out of your day and fill out the survey. Thank you so much. And hey, Hey, before you leave, I have a final challenge for you. In the next five seconds, can you comment below whether you're a PUBG fan, Fortnite fan, both or neither, and then hit that subscribe button. I don't know if you have the reflexes fast enough to do it. I'll start the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Did you do it? I'll tell you the results of your comments and the survey in the next Fortnite theory coming up in the next few weeks. And now that you're subscribed, you won't miss it. By the way, have you ever thought about how the color you choose for your outfit in a video game affects your overall performance in that game? Check out my episode on the psychology of color theory. It's the box to the right. In a game like Fortnite, should you be choosing red skins or blue skins to ultimately get that number one ranking? Well, you'll have to watch the episode to find out. In the meantime, I will see you all next week.